Jesus. You may be seated. You know, in keeping with uh, what's being taught in the Holy Spirit, we're going to speak today on walking in the Spirit. Amen? And for us to be walking in the Spirit, we have to be yielded vessels. You're not going to be able to do it any other way. You have to be yielded to the Holy Ghost and to God's will for your life. And it's not impossible, amen? Because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And the Holy Spirit does want to empower us. He does want to control us. He'll keep us safe. He'll guide and direct us. But we have to be yielded. <laughs> There's things we need to be doing, amen? And I'm going to say something <clears throat> that has nothing to do with this. But it has to do with the Lord. When you're truly born again. You will start wanting to do what's right. The DNA of God takes place in your heart through the Holy Ghost. And you can't help but do what's right. When you're truly born again. That was for free. So we're going to start off and our foundational verses are Romans 12, 1 and 2. And we're going to be going back <laughs> to these verses as we, we teach. Amen? Verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's Romans 12, 1 and 2. So where Paul is speaking to the church in Rome and he's saying, this is what you need to do. You need to present yourselves. You need to present yourselves. A living sacrifice. So that means there's things you're going to have to give up. There's things that you're just not going to be able to do no more. And really, you shouldn't want to do those things. After what Christ did for us on the cross, after picking us up from the gutter, from a shooting gallery, we should want to live for God. It shouldn't be a hassle. It shouldn't be no problem to truly live for God. We should be grateful should be grateful that whenever it was and wherever you were, you cried out that whether it was in a jail cell, as for me, it was in a shooting gallery with a bunch of dope fiends, my wife and I, 31 years ago, she had six months to live. We were heroin addicts. And right there in that house, we cried out to Jesus. Yeah, we went into the homes, but right then at that moment. So we were grateful where he brought us out of, can I get Amen. We need to be grateful and thankful. If you're not, you'll go back. Ask God to give you a grateful heart. Here we go. Romans 6.13 And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Simple. 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 Why would you go back into a bar? Why would you go back into a shooting gallery? Why would you go back to the connections? Why would you go back to the girl that you were sleeping with out there in the world that's not your wife and has nothing to do with God? Why would you go back there? 
Why would you go back there? That we're supposed to present ourselves to God. Here I am. Here I am. I present myself before you, God. Reveal to me anything in my heart that grieves your spirit and is considered a sin. Remove it. And he will. He will. See, the Bible says that we become holy and blameless. And as you mature and walk with the God and the Holy Spirit and you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, he does a good work in you. He's the one that makes you who you need to be. We cannot on our own. So that's why we yield ourselves to him. We turn ourselves over to him. You know, I always tell the Holy Ghost, because it starts in the mind, can I get amen? Then the body follows. I always tell the Holy Ghost, captivate my thoughts. That I may think on the things above and not beneath. Captivate me. Control me. Here I am. I can't do it without you. And the Holy Ghost will come. And he'll do it. The Bible says, ask and you shall have. And a lot of times we're asking for the, the material things of this world. Can I get amen? And our lives are a mess. But yeah, we got everything else as Christians. Why don't you ask for the supernatural things? So that when you do get blessed with material things, you'll be able to hold on to them and you won't lose them or throw them away. It's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. Yield to him. Surrender. Okay, go to uh, <clears throat> James 4, 7. You know, really... <laughs> I'm, I'm not Mr. Spiritual or nothing. I just read my Bible and I take it for what it says. And then I say, how does that apply to my life? Can I get amen? Really? I'm just like anybody else. I mean, I pray and read my Bible, but what I read, I, I ponder and think about it. I meditate on it. And when I read, I say, Holy Ghost, teach me. You know, uh, I found this little book. It's about this thick that my wife had stashed away. And it has to do with the anointing of God and the supernatural things of God. She had them stashed away, my wife. And I'm starting to find these things. And, I, and I'm starting to read them. And I'm starting to experience what she probably experienced before me. Can I get amen? That's why she just always floated, you know? The Holy Ghost, she just... Seriously. Some of you that knew her, she just floated on by because of the Holy Ghost. She was yielded more than me. Can I get amen? I'm going to be real. There's something about women that love God. Man, their hearts are a little more tender. Can I get amen? And us guys, we're still a little rough around the edges. You know what I mean? But anyway, James 4, 7. <clears throat> Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and then he will flee from you. So see, we have to yield to God, yield to his authority in our life. And a lot of us aren't ready for that. We still want to hold on just to a little bit of, you know, just a little bit. The Holy Ghost wants all of you. You see, we have the Holy Ghost living in our hearts. Can I get amen by faith? But does he have you? That's the question. And sometimes he sits there grieved within our, in our hearts because we're not yielded to him. We still want to do it Burger King's way. You know what I'm talking about? We still want to have it our way. But when you're yielded to him, he has something to work with. Man, he takes pleasure in rising up within you and guiding you and directing you when you're yielded to him. We need to yield to him in everything. You know, there's sometimes when I want things, can I get amen? 
I want a, a brand new pair of tennis shoes, you know, and I'm thinking about those tennis shoes or I'm thinking about that hat or something. <clears throat> and I'll get the money in my wallet and I would go shopping, you know, and I'd look at 20 pairs of shoes and hats and like that. <clears throat> and not one of them caught my attention. And the Lord says, that's because you don't need it. It's because you want it. And the Holy Ghost would even convict me. You're wanting it. Do you really need? So see, in everything, we have to yield to the Holy Spirit, how you spend your money, what you do with your time. Can I get amen? Dedicate your vehicles to picking people up and bringing them to church. Things like that, you know, that we have to yield to. And then the Holy Spirit will work with that, a yielded vessel. But if we stiff arm him and still want to do it our way, he's not going to force himself on you. God's not like that. He wants you to willingly yield to him. God bless you. As we read in Romans 12.1, <clears throat> this is going to take, it's going to take our bodies. It says, present your bodies. Amen. And then verse 2, your mind. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible says that we renew our mind daily. The Bible says that we put on the mind of Christ. The Word of God says that we think on things above, not beneath. And the renewing of our mind comes through the reading of God's word and obeying it. And the will of God is revealed to us. And then we let the Holy Ghost take us in that direction. As we become yielded instruments unto righteousness. Not the other way. Because believe me, it's a battle. It's a battle. You got the other guy? He's just trying to pull you away. He's the Antichrist. He tries to pull you away from prayer, from obedience, from reading your Bible, from loving, from forgiving. And he tries to pull you away through those things. But if you're yielded to the Holy Ghost, greater is he who lives in me than he is of the world. So really, there's nothing the devil can do to you unless you let him. See, Jesus came and he destroyed the works of the devil. But when we're yielded to the Holy Spirit and we're walking according to God's will, we're empowered now. So it's no longer, thank you, Holy Ghost, it's no longer I who lives, but he who lives in me, says Paul. So see, it's no longer you anymore. When you get up in the mornings, you don't get up with those thoughts that you used to have. Can I get amen? Or when someone backstabs you or says something about you, you don't think the way you used to think about getting back. You pray for that person. That no one does to them what they did to you. See, but the Holy Spirit, you have to yield to him. Haven't we suffered enough as it is? Why not let the Holy Ghost take control? Yield to him. Just yield to him. Let him guide and direct you. He'll never fail you. He'll never lead you astray. But we have to yield, give ourselves to him. Amen. Here we go. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6.20. For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Here we go again in Corinthians. He's saying, you know, glorify God with your body. We were, a price was paid. If you could close your eyes, 
and get a picture of what he really looked like as he hung on that cross. The price he paid for something that we did. And then it says, and with your spirit, you see, thank you, Holy Ghost, your eyes lead to your soul. Be careful what you put before your eyes. Be careful what you put before your eyes because it will can't contaminate your spirit. So I was telling the brothers, you know, when I was in the home, every time that we came home from work, they gave us half an hour to go wash up or whatever and then go to the sanctuary and get a spiritual bath. Because you see things, you hear things while you're out there. Things that are beyond your control. Or you're cleaning someone's yard and, you know, someone just happens to come by that. You see it. So we yield to the Holy Spirit. Our bodies and our spirits belong to God. He paid the price on Calvary's hill. And it was there on that cross that he shed his blood. You know, in 1 John it says that when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. His blood, there's power in his blood. It brings life. See, blood is life. And the blood of Christ, when we yield to the Holy Spirit and the convicting work of the Holy Ghost comes and there's something we just have to say, you know, God, I'm really sorry for that. And at that moment, you're cleansed from all the unrighteousness. And you become a, a yielded, holy vessel. Now God can work with something. Can I get amen? Let's go to 1 John Chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 15 and 17. I'm going to try to stretch this out. <clears throat> Don't love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Or it could be put this way. Your love for God is not real. You know, I'll just tell you a little bit of my past, which was nothing good. I was a dog. Can I get amen? Far from being a man. And I would always make broken promises to my wife. But when I came to Christ, I surrendered to the Holy Spirit and he did a cleansing in my heart, a transformation. And then from then on, whenever I promised her something, I always did it. No more broken promises. And that's because we're yielded to the Holy Ghost. Can I get amen? Because on my own, I could never properly love anybody. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. He does that work in us. <laughs> Here we go. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but from the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of. But he who does the will of God abides forever. We've got to really look at the word of God, what it's saying to us. Only those that do the will of God will abide forever. That's why you see people start off right. <clears throat> they mean well. They give their lives to Christ. But down the road somewhere, the world starts attracting them. 
They start setting their eyes on other things. And they end up spiritually dead. And because God's a God of grace and mercy, he gives people many chances, amen? But why not get it right now? Why not get it right now? I didn't like the home enough to go come back again. It wasn't that great. Can I get amen? I said, man. I didn't like jail that much either. I said, man, I got to get it right so I don't have to keep going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. So we must yield to the will of God for our lives. You know, the will of God is so simple. He wants us to be loving, for, forgiving, caring. It's God's will for our lives. He wants us to be people of prayer, that seek his face, that obey his word. That think more highly of others than you do yourself. That you become a servant. You put other people first before yourself. When you yield to the Holy Spirit, you're able, you're, you're able to do those things. Remember King David said, Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. I always ask the Holy Ghost, I said, Holy Spirit, Father, you baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Let your fire consume me. Clean out the dross. That I can be a vessel of honor. Bringing glory to your name. And the only way you're able to ever, ever, ever do that is when you yield to the Holy Ghost. That's the only way. When you yield to the Holy Ghost. Look to your neighbor and tell him, are you yielded? Or are you Burger King? Come on, come on, don't be shy. Tell him, are you Burger King or what? <laughs> well, if you're not yielded yet, tonight is your opportunity to yield. Amen? <clears throat> Let's go to Romans 8, 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. If you're not yielded and you're truly sold out for God, and you've yielded to the Holy Spirit, your mind is not going to want to obey what God puts before you. You'll become his enemy in a sense. Can I get Amen. That's even before conversion. Now we're talking about people you're saved. Now he's talking to the church. If we're carnal Christians, hateful, backstabbing, lying, you're an en you become an enemy in your mind to the law of God. But when you yield to the Holy Ghost, See, he's here right now. I don't know about you, but I can actually feel him. See, all our problems have vanished. The world goes on out there, but the kingdom of God has come here and risen up within us. And the Holy Ghost is at work. For those of you that haven't yielded completely. You know, there's a CD that I got from Chicago from the men and women's home. And there's a song in it. And this is for you men. And the song goes like this. Don't make your mama cry. Don't make your mama cry.
Colossians 121. You know, I think God's doing something new in my life. Can I get an amen? He's kind of wanting me to kind of operate in the, the gift of a teacher for a, a minute. That's why I'm kind of just back here. You know what I mean? I'm not breakdancing over there, you know. Anyway. And now you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. You see, at one time, we were about the devil's business. Let's be real. Doing wicked things. And they started right here. It starts here. It drops here. And then it brings death, sin. So we have to be studying God's word. Don't just read your Bible. Study it. Don't be in a hurry. So that your mind will be renewed. When I was in the home, they told me, we're going to brainwash you. I go, what are you talking about brainwash me? You know, don't you need your brain washed? And I did. The word of God. It does something. It clears your thinking. When you yield to the Holy Spirit, then he'll bring to remember, thank you, Holy Ghost, then he'll bring to remembrance the things that you have read. I was telling Brother uh, Mike right now, from years ago, the word of God that he had read, sooner or later, it'll come back up in him. Because the word of God is alive. The word of God is alive. It's not in vain. Get as much of God as you can, the word of God in you, to overflowing. And then the Holy Ghost will start, produ thank you, Holy Ghost, he'll start producing what? The fruit of the Spirit. Not fruits, the fruit of the Spirit. Because you've yielded to Him. And all of a sudden, before you know it, man, peace. You love everybody. Even your enemies. But at one time, our thinking was stinking. You know, when I'd get off, a little off track at the house and I maybe get a little negative or this about this and that and this and that, all it would take my wife is to look at me and go, your stinking is stinking. Your thinking is stinking. But when the Holy Ghost is moving there, those thoughts will come. They'll say, well, wait a minute. I cast, thank you, Holy Ghost. I cast down every imagination that's trying to exalt itself above the knowledge of God and I bring into captivity and obedience the very thoughts of Jesus Christ. Amen. You say that scripture. And then you're captivated. The Holy Ghost will start putting you back in line. But you have to be yielded. You have to be yielded. You've got to know how to use the sword, the word of God. Gives the Holy Ghost something to work with. Let's go to Philippians, no. Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So you see, the Word of God enables the Holy Spirit to guide and direct you in the way that you should go, so that you can be successful as a Christian, as a father, as a husband, or wherever it is that you work. 
That's why it's so important that we read God's word and study God's word and meditate, think about it. And then that gives the Holy Spirit something to work with. But if you don't put bullets in your gun, all you'll hear is a click, click. Remember the seven sons of Sceva? I'm getting a little off track here, but remember the seven sons of Sceva? They went to somebody's house and they were going to cast out some devil out of some guy and there were seven brothers. And the guy laughed at him. I know Paul. I know Jesus. But who are you? He stripped them butt naked and sent them down Hopeville Street here on Fifth Avenue naked down the street. So see, if you're full of the Holy Ghost and you confront the enemy, he's got to bow. He has to bow. Because we've been given authority from above. But we have to be yielded. Don't go messing with no devils if you're in the flesh. Or you're not yielded. The anointing of God will rise up in you, the Holy Ghost, when you're yielded to the Holy Ghost. And the way uh, the world is going now, there's a lot of devils that are going to start manifesting all around us. The spirit of the Antichrist trying to get you away from serving God properly. But we have to stay yielded to the Holy Spirit. We have to be men and women that pray that we read our Bibles and obey it and yield to the Holy Ghost so that we can be successful. Amen. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. <clears throat> and then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So you see, when we start praying, you know, we read the scripture, I think it was Sunday, where it says sometimes we don't know what we ought to pray. But the Holy Ghost will all of a sudden take charge. You know, a while ago I was at the house and I just knew I had to pray. Yeah, I prayed this morning, but I knew I had to pray. And I got down and before I knew it, I was praying. Just, it was the Holy Ghost. How do I know? Because he started reminding me of all these people that are a lot worse shape than I am. Can I get Amen. And need prayer right now. Pray for Israel. For my brothers and sisters here in the church. That might be struggling. Or, or you know being attacked. That. So we need to be. People of prayer. And when you get down to pray. Don't worry about what you're going to say. The Holy Ghost will come. He'll quicken you. He'll put words in your mouth. Amen. And sometimes even groanings that can be uttered. From down inside, the Holy Ghost. But we have to be yielded. We have to be yielded. Philippians 1 6. Jesus. Be confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Who's doing the good work in you? The Holy Ghost. He's going to complete it till the day of Jesus Christ. Jesus is at the right hand of God, the Father in heaven. The Holy Ghost has taken residence within our hearts. And he's doing a good work. He is doing the good work if you let him. Yield to him. More than anything, that's what our prayers should be all about. 
especially with you men in the home. Forget about praying for a job and a wife and a brand new car. Go to the Holy Ghost and say, Holy Ghost, here I am. Create in me a clean heart. Teach me how to love. Teach me how to forgive. Teach me how to talk to other people correctly. That's what our prayer should be. Then the Holy Ghost has something to work with. Anybody can get a job. Anybody can buy a car. Seriously. But we need the Holy Spirit to come and continue the good work He begun in us at salvation, at, at conversion. He's still working in my life. Can I get amen? He's still working in my life. How dare I ever think that I've arrived? Because the minute I think like that, I'm no longer going forward. And if you ain't going forward, and I'm not talking about going back to drugs, I'm talking about as a human being, vindictive, nasty, argumentative, backbiting, backtalker. But when we yield to the Holy Spirit, 